My friend, my friend, welcome back to the breakdown on this here banjo. My name is Wago. I teach in Hilo, Hawaii. So if you're ever on vacation in the Big Island, come by, stop by, say hi. We're at Big Island Guitars where they rent us out a room. There's many different teachers here. I just happen to be one that has a YouTube channel and I love music theory. If you're digging on the banjo and you're new to it, these are some concepts that might help. Some of the other videos talk about slides, bends, hammer-on, pull-offs, what a chord or a triad is. So maybe some of the nonsense I talk about won't make sense unless you go back and watch those. Maybe it does. Don't know. Check this out. If you do like this video, thumbs up, subscribe, put something cool in the comment section, and keep it classy if you could. I have students and young ones that watch this. Even though it's not a kid channel, it's kid friendly. Okay, so if we are in an open G tuning, that means our five is a G, D, G, B, and then D again. Should have some resemblance of a G major chord. Some of the chord constructions that we use utilize a 1-3-5 and alter some of those notes to get different chords. Like a C major, when we have a C major and we utilize the D over the top and we don't put a finger down, C major becomes a C9 or a C sus. Nice and air and open. But those aren't the kind of chords we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about the last type of triad that is found in every major scale. So, if you're playing like a G major, and you go to a C major, and you go to like a D7, those chords sound great together, but each one of those respectively are their own key, or at least are the five dominant of another key. What we're gonna talk about today is how the five dominant feels like the diminished, like this chord, the D7 feels a whole heck of a lot like our F sharp diminish, which goes back into G. So when we're playing our one scale position into our minor, the minor flips those two harmonies. In a major, it's a major third and then a minor third. This is called a tertiary or a type of way of stacking notes on top of each other, major third and then minor third. Three notes, combination of these two as a harmony, oh, you'll betcha, we're gonna be having the first two notes of the scale, the G and the B, which feels like this. That's a major, and then the minor would be the B to the D. That's a minor third. So between all three of them, G major. If you were to flatten the B, you would find yourself playing B flat, and a G B flat. We flatten the median, that makes it a minor chord. Now all this is in some of those other session episodes. You can check them out probably on a playlist. Don't know, I hope you do. Uh, and then this one's gonna just basically talking about the seventh. So in the key of G, why not? Because the banshee's tuned to that. Uh, G, A minor, we're gonna scoot this A minor. Looks like the C if you want, but we're gonna put another finger down here and pinky up top, or use one finger here on the B to make a C at the first fret. Play both of these with one finger and then throw this up top. That works quite well. You can move that up a whole step for the B minor. A whole bar is a C. Again, up a whole step to the D. If we go up a whole step, but then we turn that into a minor, we get our E minor, right? So our G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor. You can also lay your finger down across all three of them now, and you'll get it just a higher, sorry, a higher note there on your uh, high five string, but it's still part of the chord, right on. And then we're gonna move this up again, but we're not gonna be having a minor, we're gonna have a diminish here. And the reason why I wanna show this to you is because I think you should see the construction. If a minor has a, or if a major has this, which is F sharp major, because this is G, F sharp, F, E. Yeah! Oh, I can't stop playing. F, 11th fret, throw it right here. If we take this note and drop it down, that is our three. So we took the F sharp major, which would have been F sharp, A sharp, and C sharp. And then we flatten this to be an A. So F sharp, A, C sharp. Well, that's exactly what this does. It provides us with this note. And over the top of this, it gives us the A. So the A in combination with a, a root and a five gives us our minor. But we're not just looking for the minor for the seventh of a chord, we're looking for two functions. 
We diminish the mania by a half step, going down a tone, uh, and then we, uh, uh, I don't know if I can do it. And then if we go to the five, we also go down a half step. So the construction of a diminish is taking a major chord and then flattening the three, the median, and flattening the dominant, the five. Whoop. When we do that, we achieve chords like this. The reason being, it wants to naturally go half step right into our resolution. Uh, well, the concept behind that is we're having a resolution with our notes going up a half step in two places that go directly to the next chord above. The F sharp itself wants to go up that way. So when we have this minor, the next possible thing we can do is instead of having just this F here and then moving down, we can have these three notes and then up top and then right in. Feel how that goes right in there? Now, every key kind of has a different feeling for these. You gotta figure out what key you're in, find the chord, and then manipulate it. So, let's say we're doing C major. C major would have a C major as the one. C, E, G. We would go to a D minor, which means we're gonna wanna take our fingerings and play our D major, and then flatten our third. Well, our third is the F sharps. So we want to move those down and that looks awfully squinched. So what I like to suggest is you just take these chords and you play that same fingering I just showed you, but you're moving this over to the point where that finger is going to come down to here. And now you've got, it looks like a little backwards triangle, if you will. I think this is a wonderful way to play this. It means you could use this third finger to play both the D and the B string up top, and then play your first finger and second finger on your G string and your low D. Works quite well. Again, C major to the D minor to the E minor. Now E minor can be played in multiple different ways. This just happens to be one of them. After the E minor, we've got the F sharp major. Uh, if we're going up, we could play that, that's fine. We would go up to the fifth fret and play what looks like the, uh, did I say F sharp major? I meant F major, crazy. Uh, you would be playing a chord like down here, or we could be moving that up to the fifth fret and play like right here. So what we have thus far is C major, D minor, E minor. We would move this to have an F major. Now, here's the idea. The F major looks exactly like the C major does, except we play it by using other fingerings. And when we move it up, we notice that there's one string that wasn't covered. So we put our finger on that. When we move it up, we get the same shape up top. Now remember, you can put your finger right there or you can just palm mute this high note. That's how I would play it. Or just don't, don't play this top note, just let it ring muted or dead. After we have the F, we go up to a G major. Nice. G major. After a G major, we're gonna have an A minor. A minor, of course, looks exactly like the D minor the E minor, and now the A minor. After we have the A minor, same tonality. After A minor, here's where it gets really fun. We're gonna have our B diminished. So if we move our A minor up to right here, this is our B minor. We don't want a B minor, right? We wanna diminish our fifth. So where's our fifth? We're gonna move it down and keep everything except for that there. That's going to resolve to our C major, which again looks exactly like it did down there, but now we've got a bar chord. So, through the eyes of this, whenever we're playing any chord, we want to take the one, three, five, flatten the three, flatten the five, and by doing this, it achieves. that wants to go back to the one. So whether you're the F sharp diminished going to the G or you're the B diminished going to the C, all these have functionality. I hope you can play this in the key you're looking for, like an A major and use the G sharp diminished going into that. One last little caveat. 
If we play any five chord as a dominant, it sounds like the diminish. You might be missing one note, but that is very close to get you on your road to having that lending or leading tone, or uh, the feeling of a five or seven is very universal in songwriting. So through the eyes of, uh, let's say G again, G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, <laughs> E minor, and then our F sharp diminish sounds like that, but we can also play like a D7. And it goes right back to G, feels great. Reason being is when you have an F sharp diminish, the two notes that are inside the D7 are two notes that are there. That makes a three notes or two notes, which are both in both chords and two other notes, which just work together quite well. That's the idea of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, play a D7 for an F-sharp diminish all day long. I hope this concept helps you. If so, thumbs up, subscribe, put something cool in the comment section, and we'll see you next time. Aloha!